their goal, shut down all B.C. government operations in the capital. Their main tactic, prevent workers from getting inside their office buildings, but keep it polite. So we just want to like refrain from any name calling, shaming. In the end, several hundred protesters set up outside more than 20 Victoria government offices. People over profit! They were open, but only a handful of people could be seen going inside. It makes me emotional, honestly, as an Indigenous person. Um, it makes me feel that um, we're being heard, we're being seen, and that people aren't going to let human rights violations take place on those territories, on any of us. Stand up, fight back! Despite vocal opposition, the pipeline was approved by Wet'suwet'en elected leaders. In Victoria today, the fear was a repeat of Tuesday, when workers faced insults and filed complaints of assault after pipeline opponents blocked access to the legislature. Today, the union told its 10,000 local office workers to stay home. To not try and force their way through, that under the rights of their collective agreement, they do have the right to refuse to cross, so we're advising them not to cross. Near Vancouver, a blockade that shut down rail service for thousands of commuters is now down, but anger lingers. It has nothing to do with the average person trying to get to work every day. It's ridiculous. And if the government can't do something about it immediately, then what's the point of government? The goal, though, isn't necessarily to win over the public, says this UBC professor who studies protest movements. Rather, it's to make things difficult for any resource project. It might make investors think twice, or it might make the government think twice about uh, approving future projects. The big question now is, how will this conflict be resolved? The answer? No one seems to know. Greg Rasmussen, CBC News, Victoria.